Hey guys, I just went out and I bought this the other day and I was thinking it wasn't enough for me. So I went and I bought the collector's edition of The Last of Us Part 2 and I'm going to unbox it for you. So they actually handed it to me at GameStop in this big box right here. And I was thinking maybe there'd be some packing peanuts or something filling it out, but it really is just this big of a box that the whole thing comes in. So let's dump it out. There we go. Upside down. Ugh. In its wrapping, in its glory, there it is. So this is the collector's. There is one step up from this, and it is the Ellie edition. From what I understand, there's the regular edition of the game, and then there is the uh, special edition of the game, which is just the steel case and the art book. This is the collector's, which is the step up from that. And then there is the Ellie edition, which I believe they just add a backpack and a couple of other little bonuses like that for you. So, let's open it up. Let's, uh, whew. we always have to have the little neat slit on the bottom here. Or the top, whatever you want to call it. Actually, on the box here, it shows us the contents we should have inside of here. We're looking at an Ellie statue. Looks like some stickers. Um, God, I hope those are enamel pins. I love pins. Um, bracelet, you get the art book and the steel case from the collectors, but th this here it looks like you get like a little like thank you from the developer, like in a little note or something like that. That statue, that's what I'm curious. How large is that? How much space is this thing about to take up? Let's see. Got a big uh, black chunk up here. Oh, I think I'm seeing it. We kind of got to dump it out again from within this box. Ooh. And there we have it. It's kind of a split level. There's like a little seam right here. It's going to say all black all the way around, but we actually have the title on each end of this thing. So let's pop us up. Oh no, this box itself is already looking like a collector's item. We kind of got a whole scene of forestry kind of going around it. That's really cool. What does this say? Just The Last of Us Part 2 again, I see. Okay. But on the top, we have what looks like the art book. And then we have the steel case. Let's take a look at this art book first. Here it is, it's uh, pretty standard about the size of a game case. Let me grab a game case just so I can kind of get it leveled up for you. Perfect, literally perfect with the game case itself. So that's how I'm assuming the uh, special edition comes. As they just line it up, make it a double stack. Our book's pretty cool. I don't know if I can show every single thing in here. It looks like a black and white kind of drawings there. Kind of gets into a little bit more of the art character models, stuff like that. A lot of the, uh, oh, this is really cool. I like this a lot. Different environments and stuff like that. I'm really excited to kind of peruse through this and keep that up on my shelf. Next, we will be looking at the actual case itself. This is the steel case. It's got a pretty uh, distraught looking LE on the front and an Abby on the back. Ah, uh, no spoilers yet if you don't know the character Abby, but she is in this game. Let's kind of open us up a little bit. And I wonder if they actually put the disc in this or if they gave me a normal case as well. It's probably, it feels like it's in here. There we go, the two cases. There is the data disc, which will be your install. And then there's the play disc on the back. There is some, uh, digital content. I'm assuming a code on the back. I don't want to reveal it because I don't want you guys to try to steal from me. Bastards, there is a code. <laughs> yeah, uh, soundtrack, dynamic theme, the PlayStation Network avatar, six of them, and, and a digital mini art book from Dark Horse. Digital mini art book, okay. So not like the physical, but there it is. There is our steel case. It's pretty standard, you know, what you would expect from a steel case. Got it on the binding and everything. That's going to look really cool in the collection. I kind of wish I did buy the collector's edition of Persona 5 and it came with the actual sleeve that goes over. So it blends in more with your PlayStation collection. But I kind of wish they had done that, but it is what it is. We'll keep moving ahead here. 
Check out this. This looks like this could be the plaque. Does it slide out? That's what I'm getting the impression of. It kind of slides out of this little Last of Us Part 2 to reveal the Last of Us Part 2. There it is. Little thank you letter, it looks like. What would you do if someone you love was the victim of a cruel and violent act? Oh, so it's sort of like a summary of the game we're looking at. We have to like, learn at Naughty Dog. We want to thank you for embarking on this journey with us. Neil Druckmann. Nice down there. This is cool. This is really cool. I kind of want to put that up on display. Like, that'll look like an award that I received myself instead of just an expensive collector's edition that I bought. <laughs> so here is where the real exciting stuff starts happening here. We will peel this off. Big piece of just... There. I mean, you can already see we've got some disgusting, disgusting, disgusting stickers, pins. There, I went and dropped it. We've got some stickers and pins. And stickers right up in this corner. There is the bracelet. And yes, these are enamel pins, it looks like. I'm really excited about those. I like to collect those and put those on my backpack. First, you can tell on the back, they come with the standard rubber. I will be replacing those with the locking ones. If you, uh, Quick tip if you ever use enamel pins like that on a backpack or vest, something you wear often, they will come off. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's a tough one to keep on. So yeah, they actually they feel like they have little kind of grooves. They aren't the most enameled, slight grooving, slight texture, but they're not the most high quality pins I've ever seen, but they're definitely not the lowest quality. They're kind of somewhere in between. Pretty standard. So you've got the Firefly stop sign, the Naughty Dog logo there, the paw, the actual just, you know, type font of the game here, Last of Us Part 2, you get the mop here, which is sort of, I think it's on, it's on Ellie's guitar that Joel gifts, I don't know if it's like a new, uh, Firefly-ish thing, not that far in yet, you get, of course, Ellie's little stiletto right there, and the wolf, that's the logo, W-L-F, it's kind of an, one of the tribes they're fighting with during the game here. Then we will be checking out the stickers. And let's pop them open. I want to see the quality of these things. If they're like a, an actual die cut decal or just kind of got this one right here. I want to see. I'm going to peel it a little. See if it's invisible. I believe it is. Yep, that's invisible right there. It's not a die cut, which is a little unfortunate. I like decals to be die cut because sometimes you can see that film on it, but it's still pretty cool. I like this. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna put it on. Then these look pretty standard, these stickers. Oh, they're a little, little see-through, you can tell there, the material. That, that's kind of nice, actually. They may take on the color of whatever you put it on. You put on a blue water bottle, there might be kind of a blue under the text there. And it looks like we've got another white, the last of us one there, and a Naughty Dog one. Kind of want to peel the white one a little there to kind of see if we've got the same thing going on. Having trouble there. This one does not want to look this easy. Oh, same. You can see it's actually inverted from the other one. Where you just get the black lettering and then kind of the kind of a mattish um, material look feeling clear, not completely clear. And of course just the Naughty Dog one, which I would assume that already looks like it's got the kind of clearish in the, in the names there, in, in the lettering. Finally, for this portion we have the bracelet. Put this up here, and I'll take it out. Not sure the material of it there. I'm not an expert on things like this. So you get the little bead, you got the little eyeball there on the hand. I'm sure this is gonna end up being something a little bit more important in the game. And it's kind of a rustic metal type strap. Actually in the middle it looks like you meet with the metal. So it's not, you know, leather or faux leather to faux leather. It's like little straps in the back that leads to the metal part. Which might be interesting for some people. I kind of thought it'd be the leather, faux leather, all the way around. So we'll see. We'll see when we put it on how that thing, how that thing feels. So we're gonna keep moving on. And this is kind of like it's like boxes within boxes. 
now we've got the base just right here. We can kind of put that aside. That's the first box we undid there for kind of the scenery. And it looks like the final box. Now I would guess this is going to be our statue. Same kind of scenery, forest. All black on the back there, but forest scenery throughout the scene. Here's the moment of truth. Basket. You can tell that thing is out there just kind of as a packing peanut to make sure everything stays in place. Here's our big moment. Yeah, it's much larger than I thought it would be. I thought it'd be pretty big, but quite a bit bigger. Here we are. Oh, it looks in there. Let's move you away. Here is our statue. It's a bloody Ellie. At least I'm getting my first look at this thing too right now. We've got, of course, the branding on the bottom of Last of Us Part 2. She's got the chucks on. Converse. God, you can, it's almost directly, you can see the little Converse logo right under there, which is really cool. Some of this rebar is moving, it's kind of rubbery. It's kind of a rubbery material on this stuff sticking out, which is nice. That way you wouldn't break it if you were moving it around or something like that. Um, the base feels kind of hollow. It says Naughty Dog, created, developed by Naughty Dog, LLC, Idea Planet, but it's got the little uh, grips there too, or the little softening, so you're not gonna be scraping this thing up too much if you're placing it. Nice texture to the jeans. Decently, the, the block looks a little less textured. Kind of more like some dinosaur toys I had as a kid or something like that. There's some moss growing on the back here, just some trees, some moss branches coming up and stuff like that. She's got a big machete. This thing's actually kind of sharp. It's got grooves in it and divots it. I actually, I, I'm happy with the attention to detail they did in the ridges of this here. And her backpack, it's got pins on it too. And the pins actually are pretty detailed themselves. That's pretty cool. This is a little, um, I bet they put this on. There's a little piece of plastic here make sure that you don't break these arrows because those sticking out of the backpack I guarantee would break if you bent it too much there but they kind of have a little bit of give to them and uh, it's plastic it's definitely not rubber frayed edges on her shirt here some scars kind of looks like they just rubbed some paint over there kind of a little brush I like how the guitar is looking pretty accurate Real guitar. I actually admire that in the game itself. What it is missing is if this is Ellie's trademark guitar, I see already it does not have the moth 12th fret inlay there. This is just a standard double dot inlay there. The guitar itself looks a little hollow. There's no pick you can see between her fingers, which is fine. I guess I play acoustic quite a bit like that where you just don't have the pick on it. But the, I'm a little bummed on the fact that it doesn't have, it's not a, the most accurate representation, I believe, of the acoustic within the game that is gifted to Ellie from Joel. A little bit of paint in the headstock there, kind of running together. Be a little tougher to see on camera. She's making, what is she doing here? Just a chord. You can see if she was doing a power chord or any specific thing, but... Yeah, straps going around the backpack there, that's cool. There's a decent amount of attention to detail, but also maybe a couple of spots where I feel like they could have added a slightly larger attention to detail here. The blood is very vivid on the neck here. And they do have the little hair. Hopefully that doesn't break off at any point. Ponytail moves slightly to a little bit of a give. More rubbery. That is definitely rubber. The bottom chunk of the hair, all of it, the hair actually all feels like a pretty rigid rubber there. Look in her face. Yeah, she is definitely looking down at the guitar there. Watching where her left hand is going, what chord she's striking. There's a lot of detail actually in the straps. It's really cool of the backpack. It's kind of tough to see in there, I guess. But yeah, there's some good attention to detail. It is her bracelet. That's the bracelet we just unboxed there. Looks pretty accurate to the one. Because I believe this leather might go all the way around instead of it being just like a metal. But we do have her tattoo, which is the 
moth logo. It's, it's the one that covers up her bite marks that Dina doesn't believe her about because obviously no one knows she's immune. But yeah, some, some battle scars you can tell that she's got on her there. Kind of a hollow base to the whole thing. But it is a decent sized piece here. All together, this is really cool. I'm excited to put this on a shelf. Um, you know, with all my other things, you know, pops and amiibos, and it'll be a really cool part of gaming memorabilia, kind of something just for collectors. And I'm definitely big enough of a fan of this game. You tell there's a couple of creases in her knuckles. That breaks the immersion a little bit on it. It's, it's, it's an odd thing, because there's a lot of detail to certain things, but a couple of things look slightly rushed on it. There's blood staining on her jeans going down. I think that's really cool. The chucks are just so unbelievably dirty. Um, overall, so yeah, no straps to the guitar, but we still have our little loft there for the strap. And that feels like a pretty hollow piece as well. They piece that together and that's hollow on the inside, which is pretty nice. Machete's got a lot of attention to detail, so do the straps. That's really cool though. Overall, I just feel like they lost a little bit of the detail when they get to the rocks on the bottom and stuff like that. That's what reminds me more of like a traditional toy from my childhood versus a collector's item. But overall, I believe that is the end of it. Nothing else in our box here. But it's going to be tough. It's, that's the thing with this is there's already a lot of stuff that comes along with it. You know, game, art book, pins. Um, you know, the plaque and everything, and I'm already trying to think in my head, like, where am I going to place this stuff? But the, the issue now is where am I going to place the actual box itself? Because it's definitely not something I want to part with. There's a lot of attention to detail put into the box. So I'll have to put it with my collection of console boxes that I have, things like that I never got rid of. It's really, it doesn't seem as cool at the moment when you've got a, you know, Xbox One or PS4 box, but when you look back at your Nintendo 64 or your GameCube and you have your original boxes for your consoles, especially if you have something like a Super Nintendo or NES box, it's really cool. So just give it time, hold on to collector's items like this, and I promise you in a few years a game of this significance is going to be really cool. So if you've got the space, preferably don't give away your collector's boxes. But this is really cool. I haven't bought a big collector's edition like this in a long time. I had the Far Cry 4 one. And uh, yeah, mostly I just go with the one just above the average, get the steel case, maybe an art book. I've never really gone all out and done anything like this, but The Last of Us is definitely, uh, it's been my favorite game I've ever played in my life. And I've, you know, played quite a few games in my life since I was a kid and uh, mostly a single player type of guy. I think I'm sitting at like 650 games beaten in my life and The Last of Us is definitely my favorite one. So I haven't finished The Last of Us 2 yet, I'm really enjoying it, I've obviously enjoyed it enough to decide that the regular copy wasn't enough for me. I had to go get the collector's edition and I'm really happy with this purchase. I'm really excited to kind of set this stuff up and put some of these pins on my backpack and I think that's the one thing we were lacking is I think the Ellie edition comes with the backpack itself and it comes with some patches and maybe one or two other things I'm forgetting. I'm not much of a patch guy I guess. I'm more of a pin guy so it's really cool. This was the edition that I definitely wanted. I don't see myself using the backpack as much, but it really would have been a cool collector's item. So props to whoever ended up getting that. And uh, yeah, if it was available in my area, I probably would have gone for it. But this was the last one at our GameStop here. And I was fed up that I only had the regular. I wanted to try and do a little bit more. But it's really cool. Let you guys check the statue out again. The steel case. That's the game. I hope you guys enjoy it, whichever version of the game that you got. And if you're watching this, I hope you got a little bit more insight. If you are deciding, maybe, huh, should I get the collector's edition, shouldn't I? Try to be thorough. I want to make the type of video that I would want to watch myself if I were kind of thinking, you know, should I or shouldn't I get this? So hopefully I give you guys a little bit more information on the quality of some of this stuff, the sizing of it, and kind of just how the packaging and the whole thing comes together. So thanks for watching. I've never done anything like this. So I don't know, maybe I'll buy more cool stuff in the future, unbox it, kind of see how this goes over. But probably got some homies watching this laughing at me like, what you doing, dude? But yeah, it's cool. I'm really, I'm really glad I did this. I couldn't buy something like this and not try to do a video for it, explaining it a little more, especially if it's a game that I care about and I like this much. So really wanted to take the opportunity to try to, you know, show you guys some of this cool stuff here. So thanks guys. Take it easy. And uh, I don't know if you like the channel, subscribe, like it, something like that. Not much of a YouTuber, but it'd be cool to kind of pop off a little bit more, start doing stuff like this a little bit more often. Take it easy.